in the Bible, among the deuterocanonical books, there is a book called Baruch. Now, Baruch the man was the secretary of Jeremiah the prophet, but he didn't write the book called Baruch. The book called Baruch was written sometime between 100 and 150 years before the time of Jesus, uh, and it was written in Greek, and it was probably written in Alexandria. Baruch, which is also labeled occasionally first Baruch, because we have altogether four books which are attributed to this famous scribe, colleague, friend of Jeremiah, the, the biblical prophet. So Baruch, or Baruch, um, is a short book in the Apocrypha. And Baruch, who is said to be the author, we, we see him in the traditional standard canon. Uh, we find him in the book of Jeremiah. He's Jeremiah's scribe. He writes for Jeremiah. And it's a book without a story, so to speak. It makes only sense if you know the story of Jeremiah and the Israelites in the exile in Babylonia. So we find Baruch in the book of Jeremiah where he's Jeremiah's scribe. And it claims to be the same Baruch who's writing this short book within the Apocrypha, but uh, that's very unlikely. What is clear, though, is that the setting is the same. So it's, it's the, the, the idea of the Babylonian exile of the Jews. This is the cause for writing. It's made up of two parts. The first is a prayer that acknowledges that the people have sinned and are in need of forgiveness. And so it's a prayer it's saying, look, Lord, we need you. We have sinned, look on us, help us, forgive us, deliver us. So you might expect Baruch to say, uh, oh yeah, this terrible thing, it should never have happened. But he's saying, yeah, it was always going to happen because you sinned, you went against the will of the Lord. So one of the, the big themes is really that the exile is the just punishment of God for the Israelites turning away from him. And, and then the, the second part is a kind of praise of wisdom, again a, a typical feature in this time, that, that wisdom becomes important and, and wisdom actually in connection again with the Torah. So wisdom and Torah, the, the, the laws of Moses, are identified so that the book was in existence at the latest in 100 uh, BCE is due to the fact that a small fragment was found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. And this fragment is dated to around 100 BCE and therefore the, the book must have been in existence there. And this is actually written in Greek, which is quite rare. You've got to think of the, the, the Book of Baruch as a folder with two bits just stuck in it. This prayer for forgiveness and this poem in praise of wisdom. And they're just stuck together. And by the way, there is another, uh, no, there is a third story call the letter of Jeremiah, sometimes it's stuck in there to become a third part of the Book of Baruch, and sometimes it's left out on its own. It's not a key text, but it's a very typical text of a whole strand of the way that Jews and Christians pray, and it is, it is a very typical piece of liturgical prayer, prayer that goes on, the sort of prayer Jews will use in the synagogue and Christians will use in the church. But the, the content of the book makes it quite clear that this was not written by Baruch because the whole book is more or less based on earlier biblical texts. It's a kind of rephrasing, remodeling of a lot of biblical texts which came into being only in the 5th, 4th and partly 3rd century. So most uh, scholars date it in the 2nd century, but as I said, there's a 3rd century date is possible as well. You have to imagine that the people who, for whom this was written, they're living as little communities of Jews scattered across the Roman Empire. Wherever they look, every little town has an elaborate temple. If they're in a city, there are umpteen different types of temples. There's Greek temples, local temples, Roman temples, whatever. And they have to try and defend their understanding of God, which has very little of this external trapping. There's only one temple that's far off in Jerusalem. And so, so this is a book to help 
the Jewish people scattered across the Roman Empire, across the Mediterranean, in the cities around the Mediterranean, to distinguish their religion from the religion, the official religions of the cities they live in. It's um, pseudonymous, so it's written as if Baruch was writing it, but clearly comes from a later period. If you were going to write a book, though, and attribute it to someone else, why pick someone who seems more obscure, like the assistant to someone important? Well, there's perhaps two reasons for that. One, even though Baruch is an assistant, he's clearly educated, a well-educated, and you know uh, has access to the, the central um, powers that be within Israel. So he's got this position of authority, even though he's a, a scribe. So to us, a scribe is, is perhaps a much lowlier position than it would have been um, in this period. Yeah, first of all, we, we have to know that the secretary in ancient times is not a low uh, status, but it's quite an important person because somebody who is able to write and to put things in writing was always a kind of high official, so more uh, not uh, a secretary of state, but at least somebody high up in the, in the ranking. But secondly, um, by naming him Baruch, uh, he, he ties, or whoever is writing this, ties him in with something that readers will be familiar with. Um, so it's kind of giving him the authority of a real character within the biblical narrative. Uh, but not one of the big ones, because, you know, somebody, we'd have heard about it if there was a letter by Jeremiah, but he's sort of saying, ah, oh, this, this could have been something else written at that time. And Baruch actually has already in the book of Jeremiah quite a prominent position. So he delivers part of the message of Jeremiah when he was no longer able to do it. So it's clear that he's more than just a kind of uh, a secretary. And in this later Jewish tradition, Baruch actually become a prophet in its own right. But there's also a different attitude to pseudonymity, um, possibly. The idea that it's not devious, if you like. Um, and a bit later in, in terms of apocalyptic literature, uh, it's very often the case that it, it's, it's, it's a convention to write in the name of somebody else. Um, so, you know, if I wrote a letter uh, and signed it from the head of department, um, you know, that would be pretty bad news. I'd be uh, probably in trouble for that. But uh, very different in the context of pseudonymous letters.